This is the oldest cologne that is still in production today. It was made in 1792 while Napoleon was doing whatever the heck it was that Napoleon was doing. I'm going to be wearing it for the next five days, not only to see if it's any good, but also to show you the problems I run into when wearing this fragrance, such as bad longevity, and show you what you can do to help improve those problems if you have the same ones with your own fragrance. And that's where we run into problem one. You see, when you look at the bottle of this fragrance, it looks all you know, sweet and innocent and cute. But underneath this lid, it's hiding a very, very big problem. It's a splash cologne. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with a splash cologne, but for some reason I just don't get the same longevity or effect when I wear a splash cologne. But do not fear because I have a great solution. This is called decanting. It's when you transfer the liquid from one bottle to another. And in this situation, we are just using it to transfer the liquid from the original bottle into a smaller bottle with an actual atomizer, which is that little spray thing on top. But you can use the same technique to make little travel size bottles so that you can take them on vacation. Or my favorite, you can take them around with you all day so that in case you need to reapply your fragrance, you can. Generally, all you need is syringes, tiny bottles, and the fragrance of your choice. Now start with your big bottle and you can open it up and stick a lure lock syringe inside. Now begin to fill it up and try and stop a little bit before whatever size your little bottles are, so in my case 5 milliliters. That way when you begin to fill up the little bottle, it won't overflow and spill everywhere. And keep in mind you can do this even if your bottle isn't a splash cologne, you just might have to use a little bit different of a method. Now screw on your atomizer, and once you screw that on, we are all ready for tomorrow, which is day one, to apply our fragrance. Good morning, beautiful people. Now when applying your fragrance, if you want it to work the best, you want to put it on the pulse points of your body. So I like to do two, one here, one here, one on the back of the neck, one on my wrists, and then if you really want to, you can also do it on the crease of your you can do it on the crease of your elbow as well. But as I explained in the last video, you really want to put it on your pulse points. These are warmer parts of your body and they will really heat up the fragrance and evaporate it and disperse it into the air. And that is called projection. Some fragrances have good projection, which means they project really far when they evaporate off your skin. And some fragrances are a bit weaker and stay closer around you when you spray them on. Good projection will give you a nice sillage, which is just a fancy word for basically when you walk around, the scent kind of follows you around, leaves a trail. Now that we've applied the fragrance, let's go over what it smells like. It has top notes of lemon, bergamot, and orange, middle notes of lavender and rosemary, and base notes of neroli and pettigrain. So it is really fresh, but not in a shower gel way, but more of a citrusy way. Now while it is a two to 300 year old fragrance, it actually doesn't smell too old fashioned. And if anything, it smells more like a modern take on an old fashioned fragrance. So yes, it may seem old fashioned if you're used to things like Prada, Lunarosa Carbon, or any of these new fragrances, but honestly, there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. To me, it smells like if you had a modern citrusy fragrance and threw a little bit of English leather in there, but just a tiny, tiny bit. Once finishing day one, I could quickly tell what our main problem was going to be with wearing this fragrance, and it's something called bad longevity. Longevity is how long your fragrance lasts. Some fragrances last long, while others not so much. There also isn't a strong correlation between projection and longevity. A fragrance with good projection can still have bad longevity. Now while you can't completely change the chemical makeup of your fragrance, there are a few things you can do to help improve longevity. One hack that I've seen before to increase longevity is to take a jar of petroleum jelly, put it in a pot of boiling water, heat it up, get it all melted, and once that melts, spray your favorite fragrance inside, stir it up, and then put that on your wrists and on your neck. So I just think that's a lot of extra work, but if you really wanna try it, you can. I think you can get the exact same effect just by putting the petroleum jelly on your wrists and then spraying the fragrance on top. Just something to keep in mind. But the best thing you can do to improve your longevity of your fragrance is just to put some lotion or moisturizer on before you spray your fragrance on. That'll really moisturize your skin and that way your fragrance won't absorb into your skin so that your fragrance can sit on top and be ready to do its thing. Which is exactly what I did the morning of day two. Now it did help to increase the longevity to maybe about three hours. But keep in mind longevity with certain fragrances can be very different from person to person. So your skin might perform a bit better than mine. But there's still one thing that we can try that can in a way make our fragrance last however long we need it to. But it's kind of cheating. This is Toodles. 
aka my man Satchel. Now Toodles is very good at holding things, especially decants. So if I could carry a decant around with me all day, then I could basically reapply a fragrance whenever I need to. But after doing hundreds of sprays, my bottle is a little low. So we are going to need to get to work so that I can make a lot of bottles so that I can have effectively unlimited sprays wherever I am. But of course, safety first. <laughs> Alright, after making a few, I think we are all ready for tomorrow, which is day one. Now that we've fixed longevity the best we can, let's go over versatility. Now, of course, you can wear any fragrance really whenever you want, but if you're a bit confused about wearing things seasonally, you can watch my last video I made and I go pretty in depth on that sort of topic. But with 4711, I would say it is very versatile, which just means you can wear it to a lot of different occasions and a lot of different places. However, if I had to categorize it into one specific niche, I would say it's sort of an outside fragrance. The dog agrees. But don't get me wrong, you can totally wear this fragrance inside, but for some reason those citrus notes just really make me think of the spring and summer. It's also worthwhile to note that fragrances with bad longevity typically don't do as well in the winter, which is another reason why you might want to wear this fragrance more in the spring or summertime. And I explained that topic as well in my last video. So overall, it's a very versatile fragrance, but personally, I wouldn't put it as a date night fragrance. Probably something you would wear more on a casual occasion. I think for a date night, you probably we want to step it up on the fanciness but of course wearing this is better than wearing nothing now before we switch to the next day i would like to let you guys know that i'm going to be posting every friday at 2 p.m but now let's switch over to tomorrow lincoln to talk about the deeper history of this fragrance the oldest version of eau de cologne was born in october of 1792 when wilhelm mjolhens received a secret recipe as a wedding gift this recipe was a form of miracle water so this was actually originally made for internal use before it was for external use and yes i thought about it but no i am not going to drink it Mr. Wilhelm then opened a factory in Germany, in actually Cologne, Germany, which is where this got the name Eau de Cologne, and that's where we get the name Cologne from. A French general from 1794 is responsible for the name of the brand, 4711. He was frustrated by the sort of disorganization of the town that they were in, and he decided that he was going to number them sequentially. Mr. Wilhelm's house was given the number 4711. Get this, this is the craziest part. I'm gonna have to take the glasses off for this. In 1810, Napoleon, that's right, Napoleon, he declared that any medicine that is intended for internal use has to publicly list all of the ingredients inside. Now, Mr. Wilhelm didn't want to disclose his secret ingredients for this miracle water. However, we both know that you couldn't quite oppose Napoleon in that time period. So instead, he started to market this as solely a fragrance. And then in 1820, they invented this hexagonal bottle that is still used today. However, at the time, it was still sealed with a cork rather than this lid. But now, to the fun part. Well, the time has come and it is Friday, the fifth and final day. My overall impressions is that wearing this fragrance was a super unique experience. To be honest, there's something really fun and just really cool about being able to wear a fragrance that is the first cologne ever. I think that we were just really lucky that we're in a position that we can still do that. And I think for $25, it can't hurt and it's an absolutely amazing thing to try. I would like to clarify, I'm not being paid to talk about this fragrance at all, and I'm also not being paid by any links or anything. This is strictly my own experience. I bought the fragrance, and this is my completely honest review. Now, I do apologize. I really wanted to get some women's reactions to this fragrance, but that would require that I go out and talk to them. So, I don't know if I'm cut out for that quite yet, but I'll see you guys next Friday. Peace.